Without further ado, let me introduce you to the writer and director, Noah Bombach. And we have several members of this terrific cast. Uh, first off, uh, she played Jean. Please welcome Elizabeth Marvel. <laughs> and as Eliza Grace Van Patten. <laughs> oh, he was so great as Danny in this film. Adam Sandler. And as Harold Dustin Hoffman. Hey! Welcome, everybody, and look at that. We have a uh, packed house here today of actors. So we're going to, and what a group of actors we have here to talk about. So I want to start talking about that with you, Noah, uh, in terms of putting this cast together which is a, just a tremendous cast that you manage, just even the ones that aren't here today, like Emma Thompson and Ben Stiller, and on and on. Uh, what, was, uh, what was the genesis of this? Didn't it start with Ben and Adam in some way? Yeah, that was uh, uh, Ben, Adam, and I had met and had lunch and talked about a lot of things, about kind of where we were in our lives, and th thought maybe the idea of them playing brothers could be k kind of great. And... and um, Maybe at some point they should have a physical fight. That was another, <laughs> um, so. Uh, was that a condition of Adams here? Uh, <laughs> that was con contractual. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Um, uh, so I uh, left at lunch excited, and I went home. And maybe about a year later, I gave them a script, and and then you know was. You know, I was very lucky with this movie. I mean, everybody I approached said yes. You know, a lot of times actors will reach out to you and say, you know, Adam had reached out to me a bunch of years ago and said, you know, I hope you'll think of me. And, you know, I've had actors do that. And then, you know, a few years later, you're like, and, and you bring them something. And then they, they're like, I'm sorry, I just didn't respond to the character. And, 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 it is so annoying. <laughs> uh, it's like, why did you make me want something I didn't want in the first place? <laughs> and now you're rejecting me, which I think actually is sort of what Hollywood feels like a lot of the time. <laughs> Not getting things you didn't think you wanted anyway. <laughs> um, 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 but... Uh, so it was great, and you know, and Beth was somebody I had uh, uh, seen in theater, and and she we 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 met many times before, and I just wanted to find something for her to do. And uh, Grace, I, I had not seen before, but she came in, she auditioned, and was like so clearly amazing. Um, ben had I'd worked with before, but I mean, it was like you say. I mean, Emma Thompson, you know, Candace Bergen, Adam Driver, Judd Hirsch. I mean, it was kind of. You know, every day there was somebody new who was amazing. Yeah, true. Great, great ensemble that you managed to uh, put together, and obviously independently made, so you didn't have the biggest budget to pay them all millions of dollars that they normally get. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you work on my movies, it's usually kind of self-correcting in that way. If that you you have to want to be there because there's no other incentive <laughs> for it. For it. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, so Dustin, uh, let, let me ask you, why did you want to be, be there with this? is a great character, and you're so good in this role, Harold. Uh, yes. <laughs> Which I understand is actually based in some part on your grandfather, is that right? Uh, well, my grandfather was a painter and, and uh, apparently very irascible. I mean, I knew him, he died when I was in my 20s, and I knew him sort of more as a kid, but... Um, yeah, we used to go to his, his home and he would show us his newest paintings and he would s say things like, I think this one's a masterpiece. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I was, I was young, but I knew to nod, you know, I, uh, and they're all abstract. I didn't understand them at all. Um, I, he had done stuff that was more realistic when I was young, when he was younger. And I sort of was like, why don't you do that? Looks like something you recognize this. His color, um, but so I had, but I'd heard stories about him sort of like taking his work off the walls of galleries because he felt they weren't being appreciated properly, and so I, I 
um, so in that, I was sort of, you know, in some ways drawing on that and then, you know, inventing this guy. And, you know, and Dusty and I spent a long time rehearsing and talking about it. And, you know, he brought so much, I think, I mean, he's brought a lot of his dad to the performance as well. How did that help you to have all these conversations with Noah before you got going on it and in, in figuring out what the character was going to be? Well, um, <clears throat> in the theater, you get to rehearse. <laughs> and that's kind of an enigma in film, except on the day, maybe. So the idea of a meeting for two months, probably two, three times a week, just to, you know, we were able to fill in, and you're never able to do that usually. And it was invaluable. And the more we talked, the more we realized we had similar gro growing up experiences. Yeah, and, and this the themes of this. What what attracted you to the theme of this? It's so much about what is the difference between success and failure. What is the definition of that? And for all of these characters, in one way or another, and for Harold in particular too, he can be kind of an asshole, if you didn't notice. And <laughs> but you make him so three dimensional. I totally I totally understood this guy, um, and where he's coming from uh, in dealing as a father and and as an artist. And there is that dichotomy. Well, I think <coughs> that aspect of it, Noah knew more than I did, uh, because you can uh, you said it once, maybe you should say it again, uh, that people come up to you and say, uh, why did you make him such a failure? And then you argue with that, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, sometimes people, not just with this movie, but other of my movies will sometimes um, refer to the characters as... I don't know, losers or failures. Um, and I find, I take offense at that, actually. I mean, I, it was actually on Squid and the Whale, um, uh, the Jeff Daniels' character, sometimes people would refer to him as a, a, a crappy writer when they talked about him. I thought, like, how do you know? You know, you're just buying into his own sense of failure. You know, and I felt that, I was thinking about that a lot with the Harold character, in a way. I mean, the truth is, Harold is as probably more successful than most abstract sculptors <laughs> in the world. Well, that first and one, you know, I mean, he had that big hit. He had a big hit. He, had a th he has a thing at the Whitney. He taught for many years. I mean, people say it throughout the movie, but it's his sense of failure, you know, and, um, and that's something, obviously, that, that the kids have kind of imbibed, intuited, you know, taken on the burden for themselves uh, growing up. But, um, you know, so... But, you know, we never felt that way about them, you know. Um, and, you know, I always felt, um, uh, you know, that Harold is extremely afraid of embarrassment, you know, that he's, and I find that very sympathetic. I mean, I think he's, you know, he's he's afraid of being found out in a way, you know, and so he's spins these kind of defenses. And I also saw him as a character where there's, in a way, generosity is a around him everywhere. His kids are trying. You know, he, he goes to the Museum of Modern Art. He could have had a terrific night. LJ brings him in. Sigourney Weaver is very friendly. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and he runs, you know. I mean, with a good story, right. yeah, about Sigourney, <laughs> meeting Sigourney Weaver. But, um, but because he can't, you know, he's so trapped in this, you know, his own mythologies, his own sort of definition of himself and what he wants in his life that he can't be happy. And to me, that's, you know, I was, that's an interesting character. Can't, I guess it's can you differentiate success and failure uh, between being famous and not famous? Basically, and I think we have a very difficult time. Right, or being that. an artist and not an artist, too. Yes. Know? Yeah. And Danny is somewhat that way. I mean, here he's, he's a guy who's a musician, a music, a very good one, too. He just hasn't made it as much, and he's living in the shadow of what his father was or what he grew up thinking success or failure was. It's an interesting character. I'm just wondering, it had to be in you somewhere, Adam. I mean, th to do that, because you just embody this character on screen, and it, it's really a... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I'm, I'm going to answer the first part. Please. 
<laughs> I've known Adam for over 20 years, but he just told me recently that when we were talking about, we were each waiters in New York, and we talked about getting fired. And uh, <laughs> he said he got fired the ultimate time he got fired because he played guitar since he was a kid and sang, that he went down into the subway and put the can there and would oh, yeah. play the guitar. So he had play, he had a place yeah, to I come from. To, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I had a little lamp that I used to bring there, but and I I, I, I think I made twenty bucks every two hours, <laughs> and that, that was good, very good. By the way, it's the long story, but the when I got fired, I was at a pharmacy. And I was working very hard at that pharmacy, but I noticed the other workers didn't like me very much because I guess I wasn't as good as them. And I and I and because I didn't know what, where anything was, I'd always say, "Where, where do they say to put the aspirin?" And the guy would be like, "I told you, but I'd be like, I, I forgot." And he'd say, "Right over there." And I'd be, like, "Oh yeah, yeah." And anyways, the. Uh, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but the owner. Oh yeah, I'm telling you this because I met him. Yeah, at the hospital when we were shooting. Uh, but anyway, so this guy, the owner of the pharmacy, was very nice to me, and I was going to NYU uh, drama, and I was um, uh, trying to be a comedian, but I was working there to make money. But the guy said, uh, "Hey, yeah, I come into work," and he says, "Adam, we don't need you anymore." And I said, "What? What's that?" He said, I, "We don't need you to come in anymore." And I said, "Oh, how come?" He goes, "We just don't need you." <laughs> and I said, "Oh, okay, okay. How how come?" And he just goes, "Just it's better. It's better this way." <laughs> uh, something like that. And I called my father. I called my father up, and I said, "Hey, Dad." He said, "How's work going?" I said, "Ah, they don't need me anymore." And he goes, "Oh, they fired you?" I go, "No, no, no. They just don't need me anymore." <laughs> I swear to God, that's it. Was my thought. But anyways, when we were shooting in the hospital, in the hospital where uh, Harold was, this uh, one of the nurses came up to me and said, uh, hey, that pharmacist you used to work for, uh, he has a pharmacy in the building. And he came and uh, said hi to us, and he was a little older, but he had that look in his eyes like, I, I fired you, man. I got that on you. <laughs> Yeah, yes. You never forget that, do you, huh? <laughs> good man, good man. I deserved it. <laughs> so, as I mentioned earlier, this sort of started with you and Ben wanting to work together. Uh, you've known Ben a long time, and uh, right. did you ever think you'd be playing his brother? Was that the idea? That was, was, you know, it was all a collaboration. And like Noah said, I, I was seeing his movies with Ben, and I loved them. And all, all of Noah's movies. Yeah, I mean, Squid and the Whale rocked me so hard when I saw it. It's one of the best movies I've ever seen. And Ben and I, Ben got a Hollywood Walk of Fame and a, a star, a star. And I went to see him and to congratulate him. And he was hanging out with Mickey Rooney. And I was like, look at this guy hangs out with Mickey Rooney. But uh, we were just started talking. And I said, what are we going to, we have to do something together sometime, right? And, and he's like, yeah, yeah. I said, we got to, we definitely could. I, I get recognized for Ben. I always, when I'm on the street here, hey, there's something about Marianne. I'm like, yep, yep, there is. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there sure is. And he says he gets the Zohan. Hey, Zohan. He's like, that's right. And uh, <laughs> so we knew we had something that could pass for brothers. But no, Noah kind of, no, Noah took it all. No, it was all Noah. All Noah. And, uh, but but uh, we, Ben and I were very excited. Usually the original was. concept was. Adam was going to play Zohan and Ben was going to play <laughs> the character from something about Mary. Uh, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't get in shape out. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Adam past. couldn't get in shape, and I, <laughs> it was, I couldn't figure out a way to work the hospital. So. <laughs> and you and Grace, who plays your daughter, obviously, uh, had a lovely duet there yeah. uh, at the piano. That's um, right. Yeah. <laughs> Grace is awesome in the movie and worked hard, too. <laughs> Talk about that, Grace, making music with Adam Sandler on It was screen. amazing. And I also, I, I do that with my, my real dad a lot, too. So it definitely, it, it drew me to that part about it. So it means a lot. It was really nice. <laughs> and you got to do what must have been really fun, I imagine, or maybe fearful, uh, a movie within a movie that's sort of a pornographic movie within a movie. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm curious. It's an art film. It's, it's an, an art film. <laughs> Art film. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, something. <laughs> it was something. It was fun, though. It was so fun. It was like, it really was. It was like shooting a different movie and at the end, and we did it at the very end. Yeah, it's um, extremely hard to get a professional film crew 
to shoot a student film. Uh, it was like the most cumbersome, you know, everyone's freaking out, like, well, what do we do for Vagina Man's gloves? I mean, you, know, you, you didn't say that he, he, he or she had gloves, you know, and it's like, I, you know, I, what would you do if you were students in a dorm? We'd go get the things from the, you know, the kitchen, you know, anyway, so the rubber, uh, I, I, it was, it was <laughs> they were like so overprepared and underprepared at the same time. Uh, yeah. I, um, <laughs> How does that come from your mind, Noah, to uh, create? Uh... <laughs> well, what, what, one of the the um, a, a good a good set of dailies is the scene where they're watching Grace's movie on, oh, yeah. on the first one on the thing <laughs> because we hadn't shot them yet, so. Um, it was me off camera reading my description of Pagina Man <laughs> and, and, and cracking myself up while, while I'm doing it just because their reactions were so funny anyway, you know, as I was trying to enjoy it and be, be cool about it, but clearly bit. And so, you know, I was just a lot of me like, now she's peeing in a urinal. Now she's, you know, and then, and then cracking up and then them all like waiting and trying to hold the look while I'm laughing. And, um, but... But you ran the gamut in this picture, for sure. <laughs> terrific performance. And also for you, uh, Elizabeth, terrific uh, here. You are the, uh, you described yourself as the Frito Corleone. Yeah, Elizabeth. <laughs> I love that description, the Frito Corleone of the uh, Meyerowitz clan. Can you uh, tell us where you're coming from in this character? Um, well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good setup. Um, well, you know, yes, I, I did say that. Gene is sort of Fredo. Um, but it's it's interesting because when I was making Gene, when we were making Gene, um, I started watching John Cazal, and uh, and who I've always watched and loved. But uh, for some reason, he helped me find her. He was one of the, the elements that sort of helped shape her. Um, and uh, I think... I remember um, Mike Nichols talking about how every great star has a little brother, Danny. And uh, there was something about uh, Fredo being like the little brother, Dan you know, the, the one that's always invisible, that's always sort of, that no one can possibly understand what, what that journey is, um, because it's the unseen journey. Um, so I guess that's what I meant by saying. That. Well, in, in terms of the uh, themes of uh, success and failure, she actually winds up being a success. Certainly, absolutely happy with herself and her life. Yes, and I, I, I think part of it is because she didn't suffer under the the gaze of her father. She was invisible, and she she got out and made a life for herself, uh, and um, and yet returns home, makes cookies, comes to the dinners, is very loving, has a very loving relationship with her brother. And so there is something very whole and intact about Jean. Yeah, it's interesting. Can any of you relate directly to having a, a parent sort of like this that, that, that you brought into, you are saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. I, I grew up with a very... Um, dominant father, very strong father figure, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had an Uncle Harry, who, uh, this is, I haven't said, told you this, Noah, or Dustin, or any of you guys, my Uncle Harry was an artist, and he was a great artist, I and mean, he was known as the artist in our family. It was always like, Adam's going to be an actor, but Harry, he's, a, he's an artist, he's like, mm -hmm. He's the real deal. And uh, and I remember we all loved Uncle Harry, and Uncle Harry was like 92. And uh, he was, he was, he called me, this is like maybe 10 years ago, and he said, yeah, I'm getting older, and I might, might be gone soon, and I'd love you to have a few of my paintings. And I said, that's incredible. Uh, he said, what would you like? And I said, I don't, I, what do you suggest? And he said, you like sports. I do a lot of sports stuff. And he I said, yeah. He said, you like basketball? I'll send you a couple of basketball paintings. And he sent me two paintings and a bill for $6,000. <laughs> I swear to God. I was like, oh my God, how did that happen? <laughs> That's perfect. <Yeah. laughs> All right, now, uh, you guys have written out some questions uh, in advance. And uh, so I'm going to ask them. Uh, Matt B., where's Matt B.? 
Matt B's up there. Hi. Uh, for Dustin, uh, what is your secret to being a successful working actor for so long? <laughs> a lot of face work. <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, I haven't worked as much as my some of my friends did. Uh, I mean, Hackman, we roomed together in Deval, and I roomed together in those days of having regular employment. And I've, I guess I've been doing it about 50 years, and I don't think I've made over 50 movies, which is, you know, not as anywhere near as many as, as them. Uh, but, but that's not the question. What's the question? <laughs> well, you've worked as an actor for so long. How do you do that? They all want to know that because that's what they want to do, too. Uh, you know, have a long career in this business, which I think now, if you were starting now, wouldn't it be a lot more difficult than it was then? I mean, the business has changed so much as the years of decades have gone by. Everyone was in the graduate back then. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, a lot of it is luck. I mean, uh, you know, I couldn't get a job off 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 Broadway, and uh, Nichols. And then I got one part off Broadway, and uh, it got a, a good review from a first string critic. I think Walter Kerr and uh, uh, Nichols uh, heard about it, and he'd been looking for a year for. I think Catherine Ross's part and, and my part, and uh, he cast us at, for a. I mean, he, he put us in a uh, you know screen test, and it was terrible. And uh, I came, I was came back because I took off from the play for two days, and I came back. I said to everybody, you know, put makeup on. I said, don't worry, I'm, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and I learned years later through interviews that he sat in the room with the producer, and they looked at it, and. Uh, I said, well, what are we going to do? I mean, if we don't, we, do we do it with these guys or, you know, do we just shelve it? Because there was nobody else, I guess, to, they thought, you know. So I really do believe that if we had been in the first week a year ago, you know, it, it, we wouldn't have gotten it. Uh, and uh, I had a friend who was a friend of Nichols, and halfway through it, uh, he, he lived in New York, but he came out and he said he was going to have lunch with uh, Nichols. And I said, will you do me a favor? I said, he didn't allow any of us to see it. Rush's was just OK. But both Catherine and I felt that he thought he made a mistake. <laughs> uh, and uh, we, we shot 100 days. You know, it's like two movies for that kind of movie. And uh, he's going to have lunch with him. I said, please tell me uh, if he thinks he made a mistake. <laughs> And he came back after lunch and he said, that you can't say anything, but he does think he made a mistake. <laughs> so that was, the, that was the feeling. Actually, though, uh, you know, he, he went against type, because that was a book. Uh, and I didn't want to do movies after that. It was so painful. Uh, I said, that's it. I'm going back to the theater. Because uh, at least there, I'll never get a job, but it won't be painful, you know. <laughs> 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 and uh, and I got this Midnight Cowboy script, and uh, after um, yeah, and I, and I I I did it, and Nichols actually called me. He says you can't take that part. I made you a star. This is a, a supporting part. Uh, you know, you're so ugly in this. You know, I tried to make you handsome, and everything, but. Uh, you know. But in, it, it, maybe you could say, Dusty, that you kind of also, you did what you felt compelled to do most of the time, mm -hmm. and did things for the right reasons oh, also, yeah. which is partly why you've had the longevity. Oh, yeah. And passed on every other movie <laughs> along the way. <laughs> <laughs> he pa Dustin passed on this immediately when he read the script. He did? Yep. Right? Yep. You just um, turned it down? You didn't want to do it, or...? Um uh, it was. A, when did he give it to me? How long ago? I don't remember now. Three years ago or something. Two years ago. Th but I had, I had. There had been a spate of offers I was getting, and they were kind of all the same. Uh, you know, I get a, a, a call this uh, 
director or, you know, producer or a note comes with it from my agent. They said, this is great. You don't have to leave Los Angeles. You only work three days and then you die of cancer. <laughs> yeah. Or a, a heart attack. And I literally had a bunch of those and I thought, I, I flipped this one and I said, halfway through, I'm in the hospital for the rest of the movie. And I don't even, I don't talk, you know, basically. And I just, it was too painful. <laughs> <laughs> Can I uh, tell a quick one? This is quick. I don't know what I'm doing right now. These aren't really don't, don't make sense to what's happening. But but Buscemi told me a great story. He said that uh, Buscemi was walking Uncle Harry. I don't know what, how Uncle Harry got in this, but Uncle uh, Buscemi was walking with you. Yeah, Steve Buscemi was walking back. You, he watched you do a scene. Was it Billy Bathgate? You guys did, and he said you you, you were unbelievable and then you you were improvising off some stuff that went <laughs> that happened this might not be true you'll probably say it isn't but uh <laughs> but in in your uh improv and you said hey i'm talking here blah 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 and you did the thing. and then you uh, Bouchard says you guys were walking back to the trailer and you go i'm talking here to ratso <laughs> For, uh, I'm walking here. Remember that you said that. In, uh... I said it at Midnight Cowboy. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember saying. Yeah, I knew you would do that to me. <laughs> Forget it, <laughs> Uncle Harry. Six grand. <laughs> All right, uh, this is for everyone, so anybody that has anything to say about this, uh, jump in. Uh, what part of the process of these characters creating them meant the most to you, and why in developing these characters? In oh man, we, re we like Dustin was saying. We all rehearsed a lot. We rehearsed so much, and it was talking to know about ba the backstory of each character and, and figuring out your 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 character. And and I, I talked to to know a, a, a lot, a, day and night, about Danny and why he's doing this and where he's coming from and how what his relationship was like at home and and his and uh, just we we really. I just got to know my character. And then we all got to be in a room together for a couple of oh, weeks yeah, before yeah, we started yeah. filming. Noah gave us this incredible gift to spend all of this time mm -hmm. before we started filming and just reading the script together right. over and over, which to create a family organically, you need time. You got to have it. And he knew that and gave it to us. And so we got to make these very organic relationships happen. Oh. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm sorry. Yep. Um, I assume you're all actors. Uh, and uh, this script was uh, daunting. It was 176 pages. And he shot every page. And the film was an hour 50 minutes. So at some point, very early on, we realized in the way he was directing it, with dialogue coming over other di dialogue and him saying faster, faster, that this was a stylized movie. But the audience doesn't know that. <laughs> and, uh, and once we got into that, and it took a little while, into the rhythm of it, it, was, it unified us. <laughs> you know. what was, what was, and Dustin was very articulate about this when we were working, but what is true, I think, of, at least for me, about my material, but it, you know, it, obviously you look, you watch it, you see their performances. There's so much coming from the inside of these people you know, things both I was aware of, things that they kept private. But a lot of it, too, comes from the outside, which is really just doing the script. It's just finding in the rhythm of the dialogue, it actually also helps inform who you are. And Dustin was very, we really zeroed in on this when we were working and would have me do something which a lot of actors don't like, which is give line readings. So, because he wanted to hear how it was, he, how I thought it should sound. And then he would reinterpret it. He wouldn't be distracted by it, or you know, he would um, kind of because particularly the Harold character did have his. They all have their own rhythms, but that character has these long, sort of apropos of nothing, you know, <laughs> monologues, and um, which are very hard to memorize too, by the way, because there's nothing to act off of. You're just it's just some shift in his head of like you know. Uh, he had a sweet. Uh, Assistant, uh, is that script uh, script supervisor. Yeah. Sasha? Is that uh, am I going to get? Is that sexist to say that? Uh, that she, she's sweet, <laughs> um, and she's I guess about twenty two, <laughs> and I'm all right so far, and uh, <laughs> and she sat next to Noah, and Noah was looking at the screen, 
and she had a script in front of her, and she would come up to us and uh, very quietly, you know, take us aside uh, and say, you know, that wasn't a period, that was three dots. <laughs> and that's how, it was word for word. Yes. And uh, I remember I said to you, know, when we were just rehearsing, I said, but those other movies you did, you had to have had a lot of improvisation in that. And he says, no, I didn't, not one word. And then I remembered that film, what, what was the name of it? The six weeks, the two days, the... The Romanian movie? Yeah. Christian Munju's movie. Yes, yes, and I was able to talk to him after I saw it, because there's a scene where they're all in the, you know, having dinner or whatever, like eight or ten of them, and I said, how many times did you improvise that? Because it's so ex expertly done. And he's in Romania when I'm talking to him, and I'm here. He says, that was word for word what I wrote. <laughs> and it, was, it wasn't improvised. You know. Well, it's a, it's a terrific, they're giving me a signal here, but a terrific uh, movie, Noah. And all of you are so good in it. Uh, thank you for coming out here today. Thank you. Guys, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot.